it's almost raya. It's that time we eat lots of rendang, hang out with friends or family, and spend lots of money. But if you think you're going to end up spending lots of money, imagine people who have just got married or bought a new car or bought a new house. In fact, that sounds like a friend of mine, Shakri. This will be the first raya I'm celebrating as a married man. You start giving uh, Duit Raya when you start working. So technically, I have been giving Duit Raya for a while. It's just that now that I'm married, Raya comes with the additional cost of Chinese New Year because my wife's Chinese. You know, I recently bought a new car, uh, bought an apartment. More than half of my salary goes to uh, groceries, paying the bills, my car, rental for the house, utilities, petrol, my student loan, my internet bill, mobile phone, insurance payment. When it comes to Raya preparation, it's just once you have a house, then you need to decorate the house for buying stuff to cook for the Raya Day feast, buying uh, tapoes and containers for the Kue Raya to entertain guests for open houses. We're lucky because it, it's still the early stages of our married life, so we don't have all those uh, expectations on us yet because we don't have our own place and all that. But later on, those will be costs that we will need to save up for. Shakri, I can relate to everything you just said, except the part about having a beautiful Chinese wife, of course. We spoke to Julian Ng, a portfolio manager at a large financial institution, and asked him what did he think about Shakri's financial planning and can he give him any advice? Um, I think the uh, ratio of fixed expenditure to uh, household income is a little bit high at the moment, but I think it's very typical of people who are just uh, starting off in their careers. One thing to consider is that he, uh, and both he and his wife, uh, will see uh, growth in their income as well as they move, uh, as, they, as they progress uh, in their careers. For instance, um, this thing about Raya festivities, um, it's, it should be a time where you don't have to uh, worry too much about uh, expenses because you should be spending time with your family and friends and that, those are the stuff the kind of stuff that uh, give you happiness. But um, over, over the long term, uh, I, I would say that um, he has done the right thing in terms of um, putting about 10% of his income for um, um, his long-term uh, savings. And he has also invested in property, which is also a form of uh, long-term savings. They have a lot of time to um, invest. If you have 20, 30 years to plan for your retirement, then you have a lot of time. As a start, they should be putting more of their money into riskier investments. You mentioned uh, high-risk investment. So for a person like me who's not really well-versed in all the investment options out there, um, where does one get into this kind of high-risk investment? Uh, you, you want to subscribe to the idea that you don't want to put all your eggs into one basket. Um, the easiest way is to buy unit trust. Uh, and, and unit trust gives you um, the advantage of um, an immediate diversification. And, and you'd be quite surprised, even if you like, put aside money that you sometimes you waste, you know, sometimes we, we throw away 50 ringgit, 100 ringgit, even 200 ringgit every month uh, doing stuff that we don't really want to do or buying stuff that we don't like. If you put this 50 ringgit, 100 ringgit aside for the next 20, 30 years, you'd be quite surprised to know that at the end of your uh, retiring, at the, at the end of your working life, moving into your retirement life, you, have, you would have a pretty uh, tidy sum of um, a mess egg, you know. And, uh, that, that is the power of um, compounding interest. Yeah. So when I say risky investments, I, I don't mean for you to take blind risk. There you go. Looks like Shakri is on the right track. But what can you do to manage your finances? Well, for a start, try to put aside at least 10% of your salary for monthly savings. Secondly, look at longer term investments like unit trust, but do seek advice before you embark on any of that. And finally, 
Remember that even that additional 50 to 100 ringgit you spend on silly stuff could be better served setting it aside. Remember that saying, sikit-sikit, lama-lama jadi bukit. And most importantly, enjoy the simple things in life, like family and friends, things that don't cost a lot of money but have a lot of value. So drive safely, those of you who are going to Balik Kampung, and from all of us here at Kopitam Economy, Salamat Hari Raya. Think of us when you have coffee with your family. Salamat Hari Raya Kepada saudara serta saudari Setahun hanya sekali Merayakan hari yang mulia ini